In this video, I wanted to provide another example of what we mean by the average causal effect. And the example which I'm going to be talking about is the effect of on-the-job training for salesmen. So if you own a firm, what you might be interested in is what is the causal effect of on-the-job training on the level of sales which a given salesman achieves. So the idea here is that we might have some sort of binary variable, Ji, which represents whether that particular candidate received on-the-job training. So it would be equal to one if they did receive on-the-job training and zero otherwise. So essentially for a manager, what you're interested in is did that on-the-job training actually cause an increase in sales? And what we can do here is just like before, we can essentially take those candidates which did receive on-the-job training. So those are the candidates for which Ji is equal to one and we can evaluate their sort of average level of sales. So when we're talking about population quantities, that would be the expectation or the expected level of sales of a candidate within that group. And then we can compare that with the average level of sales for a candidate which was in the group which didn't decide to take this on the job training. So the idea here is that essentially we are saying that individual candidates make the choice as to whether or not um, to receive the on-the-job on training. So much like before, what we can do is we can calculate the simple difference in means. So the difference in means here is just the expected level of sales for a candidate which is in the top group, so that's Ji is equal to one, and then we take off from that the expected level of sales of a salesman when Ji is equal to zero, in other words, for those candidates which didn't receive the on-the-job training. And much like before, what we can do is we can actually define the potential level of sales for each individual candidate. And there are going to be two different potential levels of sales. There's going to be the level of sales which that individual would have achieved if they actually had received on-the-job training. So that's S1i. So that's if Ji was equal to 1. And there's also another potential level of sales for that particular candidate, which is the level of sales which that individual would have achieved if they hadn't received on-the-job training. And what we're really interested in evaluating is for that particular candidate, what is the difference between S1i and S0i? Essentially, this will then represent the causal effect of on-the-job training. But the problem here is that in reality, we only observe one of these two outcomes. We observe the outcome of S1i if that candidate actually did choose on-the-job training and we observe S0i if that candidate didn't actually choose to undergo the on-the-job training. So what we can actually do is we can look at our expression for delta mu and we can actually change this first expression to have the expected value of S1i because that is what we're going to actually be observing in this top group. And the second expression becomes the expected value of S0i given that Ji is equal to zero. And much like before, what we can do is we can actually work at our expression a little bit. And from that, we will get something which has both the average causal effect and the selection bias effect. So this equals now is following up from over here. So what we can do is we can first of all take our first expression. So the ex that's the expected value of S1i given that Ji is equal to 1. And then from that, we can take off the expected value of S0i given that Ji is equal to 1. And then because we've taken off this expression here, which wasn't in the original expression, we then have to add it on. So then we have to add the expected value of S0i given that Ji is equal to 1. And then finally, we just got this expression here, which is left, which is minus the expected value of S0i given that Ji is equal to zero. And much like before, this top expression here actually is what we call the average causal effect. And this bottom expression here is what we refer to as the selection bias effect. So why does this top expression here represent the average causal effect? Well, essentially, conditional on Ji, we could rewrite this top expression as equal to the expected value of S1i minus S0i given that Ji is equal to 1 because both of these expressions have the same conditioning so we can combine them into a single expression. 
So this actually represents the delta i, which we talked about over here. The only difference being that we're conditioning on the fact that we're actually in the top group. So this technically actually refers to the average causal effect on those which were treated. And we expect that the average causal effect of on-the-job training is to increase the level of sales which a salesman achieves. So we're expecting that the average causal effect is greater than zero. How about the selection bias effect? Well, this first expression here is the expected level of sales of an individual it had they not received on-the-job training, given that they chose to receive on-the-job training. And we're comparing that with the expected level of sales, which someone in the group who didn't decide to have the on-the-job training actually achieved. So which of these do we actually think is likely to be bigger than the other one? Well, it's probably my view that those people that are most interested in their career and, and sort of developing well in terms of their work life are those ones that are most likely to choose the on-the-job training. So they're probably the people that would have done well regardless. So what that means is that this first term here is likely to be bigger than the second term here. In other words, I expect that the selection bias effect here is greater than zero. So now we can talk about what is the bias inherent in delta mu. So delta mu is equal to the sum of both the average causal effect plus the selection bias effect. And because both of these effects are positive, this is going to be greater than the average causal effect. So in other words, if we just compare the simple means between these two groups, then essentially we are going to be overestimating the effect of on-the-job training on the level of sales which a salesman achieves. So much like before, if we could assume random assignment of on-the-job training, that would then remove the selection bias effect. And we can see that in the case of random assignment, that essentially S0i and S1i are independent of Ji. So I can change this second expression here with the expected value of S0i to be the expected value of S0i given that Ji is equal to one. And now this first expression in the second line and the second expression on the bottom line are the same. So the selection bias effect actually disappears. And just to reiterate, this is in the case of random assignment of Ji.